Quote, if you're going to give your heart to someone, make sure they're a rider. End quote. Wolf Warriors MC. Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophiles Bookcase. I'm your host, Erica the Bibliophile. So today we are back with another Casey Mills uh, book. What was Wolf Warriors MC? I'm looking dead at it and still couldn't get the name right. Jesus. Um, so let's jump right into it. So we have Miss Cambry, who is a single mother of a beautiful baby girl named Lay. I believe she's three. Yeah, she's three. So um, she's arguing with her baby daddy who doesn't want to be a father to his child unless they are a family. So, you know, she's telling him she don't want nothing to do with him. And he's like, okay, cool. But you know what that means though, right? You get nothing from me. Because every time he picks up, quote unquote, picks up his daughter for her to spend time with him, he's dropping her off to either his mother or his sister. And the way he's looking at it, he's like, it doesn't matter who she's with when I have her. And it's like, it does, though, because she's not with you. You're her father. Why are you handing her off to other people? If that's the case, you could have left her with her mama. And she has this weird relate Cambry, excuse me, has a weird relationship with her baby father's sister. Cause she's like, you know, don't keep her away from us just because you got this situation going on with him. And I understood Cambry completely. She's like, that's that's not the point. I'm not trying to keep her away from her family because y'all are her family. It's just it's the principle of the matter. It's like, as her father, he's supposed to be doing these things, not just dropping her off to y'all and y'all keeping her. Like, of course you can see her. Don't try to make me out to be this bitter baby mama who's keeping the baby from the family because of the baby daddy. And so, but Camry also tells the sister, like, you know, as of right now, she's with me like when i find time and i make time of course y'all can still see her that's that's not the point but uh she has to find a job so she used to be a dancer before she had lay so now she's applying to be a dancer again so when she goes to this lounge because excuse me it's not called a club it's a lounge the girl who is doing the interviews her name is brooke she's I'm telling you, these mean girls who peak in either middle school or high school, that's all they are for the rest of their life. And so she's sitting at the phone, um, I mean, at the table on her phone, acting all bored, and is like, let me see you dance. So, Lay, she was like, you know, she was there for the interview. She wasn't prepared to dance right then and there, which I was confused by, because I'm like, if you're interviewing to be a dancer, they're going to want to see what you can do before continuing on well I, I i mean i don't know how strip clubs go but that's just what i would assume you know what i mean i'm like you're applying to be a dancer why would you not come prepared to dance but brooks she sends her off like you know we got some stuff here go put it on and come back and audition so she does that and then we're introduced to bash who comes in and you know he sees a woman auditioning and it's like damn you know, mesmerizing. She has a a very distinctive tattoo of some flowers that are like in bloom, in different stages of blooming. It sounded really dope. It almost reminded me, like not the same, but of Cardi B's, uh, what is that? Peacock tattoo, something like that. And so, you know, as he's watching, Brooke looks at him and then looks back at her and is like, that's enough. I'll let you know if we want you or not so you know Cambry is confused because it's like damn I'm not even done but all right I guess and so Bash comes over to Brooke and it's like you know who is that and send her my way and Brooke is like I'm in charge of choosing the dancers and he's like I let you think you in charge but you know this is like actually my motherfucking building and I pick and choose who does what actually like you feeling yourself a little too much and you need to back up 
And so Bash is, like I said, he's the owner of the lounge. I keep calling it a club, but it's a lounge um, where there are dancers. And they're they're known for the dancing and also alcohol that they sell. It's like a sweet alcohol. Um, and he's also a part of a motorcycle club called the Wolf Warriors. And so he has had sex with Brooke before, but that's literally it. They had sex once, I think maybe even twice. And he has never agreed to anything more. Like they haven't hung out. They haven't went on dates, like nothing. Like literally sex once or twice. And as soon as the sex was over, that was it. And after that, like he's never gave in to her advances, nothing like that. And... I'm making a point of saying that because I'm going somewhere with that in a minute. I'm doubling back to another book review that I did not too long ago. Um, So he's like, you know, send her my way when she comes back out. So when she comes out, Brooke says some slick shit trying to be shady. And is like, um, he wants to see you, but you're not going to be dancing here. So she's like, okay, so then what am I going to see him for? Um... And she goes to his office and he makes her an offer for her to be a bartender instead of a dancer. And she's like, why would I take that when I know I can make much more money dancing and I'm not a bartender? Like, that's not what I came here for. And she's like, also, why can't I dance? And he tells her, because I'm going to fight every nigga that approaches you. So it's better off of you just being a bartender because you get paid a set salary and you also get tips. So she looks at it as it's better to have one job, like a different job than no job at all. So when she comes back and she's training, she's getting to know people, the girl she's training with tells her you know we get to keep all our tips they don't believe in taking a portion of our tips so you know whatever you make is yours to keep and she's like damn okay and of course even behind a the bar they have to wear these little shirts with a little bit of a uh, cleavage 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 showing um so men still find her beautiful still you know trying to feel her up and look at her and um <clears throat> Even that, he has a problem, but you know, where he normally wouldn't be at the lounge all the time, he comes, he steals her away, and, you know, pushing up on her, he's attracted to her, but she's she ain't got time for that. She's still dealing with the shit with her baby daddy, and, you know, trying to focus on the job, and she's like, I'm not getting involved with nobody right now. But, you know, the um, I do want to warn anybody, this is a fast-paced book. It's not like a long, drawn-out story, but it is good, though. So the more time that they're spending together, people are starting to notice. Because like I said, Bash, he don't have women around like that. Like, he may have sex with somebody, but there's no relationship, no him really being seen with them like that. Because, you know, he takes Cambry out uh, to one of the the club's events like she's riding on the back of his bike and that's a big deal to everybody because it's like as a motorcycle club you know your bike is important and to see a woman on the back of his bike is like basically y'all married at this point um and so that night at the event he also races against pharaoh because he has a friend by the name of pharaoh they're basically like one and the same um he talking shit and it's like you know race come on race and if you lose i basically take your lady or whatever and bash know he just talking shit but he also like agrees so that's another thing it's like you not only riding on the back of this man bike but you also are like the thought of somebody else approaching you got him to race so can't we like she just big shit around there um and so of course he wins the race because it's like it's not a matter of him not being able to race he just doesn't do it and so uh after he wins Cambry kisses him and pharaoh was like wait i thought you were supposed to kiss the loser and she was like whether he won or lost the kiss was always for uh bad so it's just like yeah if he would have lost i would have gave him a kiss 
And he makes a joke. He's like, man, this shit was weird from the start. It's just funny little moments back and forth between those two. And of course, Brooke has to come over being a motherfucking hater. Like, um, be careful around him. He's dangerous for women and children. And with that, she walks away. Because Bass tell her, first of all, you don't know what the fuck you talking about. So you might want to leave before something happens to you. And once again, she's like real brave thinking he's not going to do anything. And he's like, girl, you know me. I don't even know why you playing with your life like that right now. And so she finally gets some sense about herself and go on. And Camry is like, you know, what? what is she talking about? He's like, you know, we'll talk about it later. So later... Um, I forgot to mention, Cambry got her next door neighbor to watch um, Lay while she's out on a date with him. So they go back to his apartment and he tells her the story of how he used to be with another motorcycle club and, you know, basically he was a killer. He got sent on a mission to kill who he now knows as his best friend, Pharaoh, but um, when he pulled a gun on Pharaoh, like at his head, Pharaoh had one pointed at his heart. So it's just like, um, we can both pull the trigger at the same time and we both die or we back away and work on who son bashed there to kill him. So they both put the guns down and Pharaoh tells him to look down at his chest and there's a red dot on his chest. So it was rigged from the start for him. Because he was going to die regardless that day if he chose to pull the trigger. So, Pharaoh takes Bash to his, quote unquote, what do they call it? Press. Because I was going to say to his leader, but same thing. Who is, um his name is Padre. And he explains the story. And come to find out that Bash's former motorcycle group, like there are rules that you have to follow. Basically, what? like the mafia it's like you can't just be putting hits out on people for no reason and so his own like the the president's only reason is because he was taking out key players of old other excuse me motorcycle groups in hopes of like infiltrating and taking over so he was trying to uh be like a dictator and just take over everything so padre tells bash it's like you come be with our club but you have to go back to you know your side of town and take him out and then come back and join with us and that's exactly what he does but not but bash was seeing another woman at the time her name was coy and she had a son by the name of davis so you know why he honored his stripes with the wolf warriors and thinking life is all good over here his former president who he took out his brother finally connected the dots and found out that it was him that killed his brother so they came and kidnapped davis and roughed up coy telling her you know she has to set up bash in order to get her son back so of course she does that but when she calls as he's telling the story to Cameron, he's like, her voice didn't sound right. And the shit she was saying made absolutely no sense at all. And it's like, you can tell, it's just like, why are you talking to me about this? Or how she probably was trying to get him to come somewhere like right at that time. And it's like, why? And she probably didn't have a good reason as to why. So it's just like, nah, I ain't doing that. So he gets on the phone with Padre explaining the whole situation to him. And Padre agrees. So when they find out what's going on, they get Davis back for Coy. But Coy ends the relationship with him. Like, I can't get my son involved in this. And she moves away. And so with her moving away, her only stipulation was Bash don't know where she is, like where they live now. And so Padre knows, but he never told him. So... Cambria is like, you know, thank you for this information. Thank you for telling me. Um, but I have to proceed with caution for my daughter. He's like, you know, I completely understand. But they still continue on with 
their relationship. But she's trying at the same time not to get too close to him. Um, but of course, it's like the inevitable. They're going to get close. He's starting to get close to Lay, and she loves him because she's in the stage now of learning how to ride a bike. So while she's riding her little bike, she's fascinated with his bike. And at one point, he walks into the club, Bash does, and he sees Padre talking to Koi. And it's just like, it's a hit to him because he hasn't seen her in so long. And it's like, you know, what are you doing here now? So come to find out, um, Koi is pregnant. And she's there to return the keys, I guess, to the place that Padre was paying for her to stay at. Because it's like, it's not right for y'all to fund my life when I'm pregnant by somebody else. So, you know, she's moving again. It's like, here, you can take the keys and we'll be done with the situation. And so, he's like, as he sees her pregnant belly, he's like, is that mine? And she's like, no, they are not yours. And it's just like... What you so hostile? Like, should I say it like that? But it's just like, it's been such a long time. Like, he's respected her wishes. He ain't tried to find her. He not even really rude to her in the moment. But she just has straight, like, hatred for him and attitude. And it was kind of crazy because it's just like, you doing a lot right now. But anyway, um, she's pregnant with twins by somebody else, so she leaves. And, but before she leaves or she tells him, I'm so glad I aborted your baby. Now I'm pregnant by somebody else. So no, there's no chance that these are your kids. And it's just like, so you, wow. (laughs) So he's like, cool, whatever. She leaves on about her way. So he has little words with Padre. Like, you know, have you known where she was all this time and you ain't say nothing? And I was like, but I thought that was the agreement. I thought you knew that, that he knew where she was. And just didn't tell you. Like, he was always going to keep his word. And, oh, no, he wanted to know if he knew about the abortion. And Padre was like, you know, no. But even if I did, like, I wasn't going to tell you. That's not my story to tell. And so he goes off the grid for a while. Because it's like, not that he still has feelings for her. But he's upset about the fact that she could so callously tell him that she aborted his child. And so he don't talk to Camry and little Miss Lay. Like she's looking for him, wanting to know where he at when he coming by. And that pisses uh, Camry off more than anything. Cause it's like, this is why parents don't let people meet their children. Cause you know, kids get attached fairly quickly. And then you get the pull this disappearing act and don't say shit. So, you know, she decided, like, I'm done with this nigga. I'm not even finna play this game with him. Um, But, of course, she's still working at the lounge, and everybody knows her as being, quote-unquote, bashes, you know, as with motorcycle clubs, it's like property of. So that's what she's known as anyway. So ain't nobody touching her or even trying to talk to her. So he pops back up with this explanation of what I said of like I had a kid and she got rid of it and Cambry is just like I don't understand so you that upset you won't talk to me you won't communicate with me so obviously you still miss her and you still feel something for her because why does that make you upset that way and it's just a mis- miscommunication of like I'm upset about my child. I didn't have a say so. I didn't get to say anything like, and then she just drops it on me. Like, I'm so glad I aborted your fucking baby. Like, and you just got to think of all the emotions that a man could possibly go through. Like, why was I not good enough for her to have my kids? Like, why would she tell me that way? It's just like the possibilities are endless. And then you have to mourn for a baby that, you know, never fully came to term that you never knew about. It's, it was a process and I was kind of upset that she wasn't allowing him to have that. It's like, yes, be upset at the fact that nigga, you could have said something, but you won't even answer the phone. You sending messages through other fucking people and expecting me to be okay with that. 
Now that I completely understood, like be upset about that. But the actual explanation and what he's going through, you don't get to be mad at that. And then like equating mourning for his child saying, oh, you must still have feelings for her. No, I'm mourning for my child that I never, like it never will be. And it's a possibility I never would have known regardless if he hadn't shown up that day to see her or even if she would have carried the child to full term and never told him about it. Like why, what's not to understand about that? But anyway, they make up and she makes him sleep out on the couch, but he wakes up to gunshots and somebody going off. Is Cambry's baby daddy upset about the fact that Bash is there at the house? Like, and you got this motherfucker around my motherfucking daughter, like around my child. And so he's shooting wildly, not only into the house, but he also shoot up Bash's bike. And one of those bullets went through Bash's shoulder. So, you know, he sends her off to a safe house. He go gets Pharaoh. They pull up on the nigga. And like, he literally beats the baby daddy's ass and it's like you real lucky that i'm letting you live because like he had half a mind to kill the nigga because it's just like you don't even care about your daughter's life to the fact that you shooting up into the house where she's at and you know cambry like this whole time it's been her by herself of course with the help of bash in some places and her next door neighbor but She's been taking care of her daughter by herself. That nigga literally stopped doing anything for uh for Lay. Ain't seen her nothing like that. But somehow you get word, which I'm trying to understand. How did he even know? Did he just decide to pop up that day? And you upset about the fact that another man done stepped up in your place where you refused to do uh do so? Excuse me. Um, and so he walks away. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, he gets a lawyer and he had planned to send a baby daddy to jail. Cause it's like, not only did you recklessly fire a weapon, he shot up his bike. So it's just like, uh, what destruction of property, like all that shit. He had mad charges and was facing up to 10 years in jail. And then Cambry gets, uh, hold on, excuse me. Y'all, let me take a sip of my drink. Cambry gets a call from the baby daddy's sister like i know you did this why would you send that man after my brother your brother shot up the house where my daughter was at and when the sister said well can you blame him this is your fault i'd have been like where are you at so i can make your face look like your brothers because you justifying him almost killing my daughter and shooting up in the house where she is with the fact that there was another human being of the male species in my house makes no fucking sense so the fact that your brother is still breathing you need to be very fucking thankful and get off my motherfucking phone i said oh the sister the sister pissed me off and the baby daddy uh it was one point when they was arguing on the phone I forgot what was it he um because he's talking about don't make him sue for full custody she's like how how the fuck you gonna sue uh sue for full custody you um you didn't sign the birth certificate you know you don't have her most of the time like there's no way that a judge would take my daughter from me and give it to you and he's like don't worry about uh me not signing the birth certificate but he uh excuse me he did get a dna test done to find out that she actually was his and she's like what you testing my daughter he like hell yeah you think i'm stupid bitches be lying all the time so that's another thing why the fuck you want full custody of a daughter that you didn't even believe was yours and she's like how did you even do that so he's snitching on his sister talking about you know of course my sister helped me out it's like yeah because you take the girl and drop her off to your sister so when she was having this conversation with the sister and She's like, and you was doing sneaky shit behind my back, which I was like, Cambry, I don't understand why you're surprised. Because as much as the sister lied, talking about she was on your side, that's still his fucking sister at the end of the day. So she hangs up with her like, man, I ain't got time for this shit. I'm not doing this with y'all. So anyway, um, in the end, 
bash buys them a house together because he's like i'm in this for the long haul it's me you and late that's my kid you know y'all belong to me it is what it is so she's like yes of course we'll do it um in the end the club throws them like a ceremony like a welcoming to the club because as them being bash's family they also belong to the club now camry has a problem with this because the hoodie that he want her to put on says property of bash and like i said in motorcycle club that's how that goes and so she's like i'm not putting this shit on and he's like well you can't go in there because you know you have to wear this and so she's like all right cool so you know he seduced her a little bit get her to put it on and little miss lay comes out she got a shirt on too she's like look mommy i got a shirt just like yours and she's looking at the shirt because it has the wolf warriors on the back and then on the left uh like in the left upper part of the shirt it says property of bash and she's like really you even got the shit on my baby he's like i'm telling it's tradition you know what it is i don't look at you as property and uh the club welcomes them in like you know welcome to the family we protect your life with ours love and <laughs> that's just the way it ends happily ever after all right i talked way longer than i thought i was but i hope you guys enjoyed this review of wolf warriors mc bash's story i hope we get pharaoh's story next because i really did enjoy this anyway peace and blessings my beautiful people